Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or a big welcome if you're new here. My name's Jenny and I make all sorts of lifestyle content on this channel. So I think make things like weekly vlogs and then videos about chronic illness, disability, mental health, Disney, fashion, beauty, travel and pretty much anything in between. So hopefully there'll be a video here that you'll enjoy and I hope you stick around to watch this video. So I'm back with another video for EDS Awareness Month. There's a couple that I've made already, so I'll link them below if you want to go and check them out. But this one, we're particularly focusing on things that people have been offered once they've been diagnosed. So things like treatments, referrals, that kind of thing. We're gonna be talking about how helpful those have been or if they haven't been offered those kind of things, the impact that that has had. And also we're gonna be talking about what sort of things we think should be offered to people with EDS because there's still a lot of gaps, a lot of stuff that isn't offered. And so it'd be really interesting to hear what sort of things people with EDS think that there should be on offer. As with the other videos that I've made, we've got some lovely people with EDS who have kindly offered to be part of this video. So you get to hear a whole range of stories, which I think is really important. And yeah, hopefully you'll find this interesting and informative and helps to raise awareness about EDS. So after I was diagnosed, I was not given any referrals, any resources, anything at all. It was wait for two years on this waiting list, go to see the geneticist, have him confirm that yes, you have EDS. And then what he said to me was literally just, I have lots of patients that are just like you, but I have nowhere to send them. I'm sorry, but I don't have anything for you. There's nothing I can do for you. And so there were no physio referrals. There were no like counseling referrals. There were no any kind of specialist that could help me afterwards. There was just nothing. And I felt so alone and my care is now very piecemealed where you have one specialist who tries to help the skin and then another that tries to help the hormones and another that tries to help the pain and so on and so forth, but it's all so spread out and they don't talk to each other. And so my care is definitely impacted by that for sure. I would love to see every person after an EDS or HSD diagnosis get some kind of like pamphlet with perhaps support groups and where they can go to find out more information about their condition some referrals for sure for specialists that are relevant to that person. So like, I believe I really could have benefited, especially from a physio referral, things like that, a pain clinic referral, lots of those things. So I think it really depends on the individual person, but I think for sure a way to connect with other EDS patients and appropriate referrals that match their case. I see many specialists and my rheumatologist still denies Ehlers-Danlos as a medical diagnosis. When I was diagnosed, I was basically told to go to physical therapy um, and pretty much for the rest of my life. We need knowledgeable physical therapist, aqua therapy and more support. I was referred to the pain clinic when I you know, was talking about how much pain I was in from dislocations and my joints being very unstable and just generalised pain all over my body. And they, at first I was sent to a physio, then through the pain clinic, and then the pain clinic sent me to a physio after me asking not to be sent back to a physio because physio does nothing for me. I've been doing physio now for a good couple of years and I've had no improvements. Um, I have gone more downhill with my mobility and my pain than anything has improved. Now, the physio might be helping me to slow that down, but in four years going from someone who was able to lift a cask full of beer, a full cask of beer by themselves, to someone who can barely hold their own weight or stand in the shower is fairly dramatic. I otherwise have not been offered any referrals to rheumatology, I'm waiting for a referral to neurology because I have a Chiari malformation, which appears to be worsening. So here's hoping that something will be done about that. But I've seen no other specialists and had no other management other than physio. 
and painkillers. I, I was offered painkillers and that was it. So to me, that doesn't meet my needs at all. I really wish I had more support. I have spoken to so many people. I spoke to Citizens Advice, which is here in the UK to help people. I spoke to a nurse the other day and most people agree that I should not be working full time. I am literally only living to work. I don't get to enjoy my time after work or um, weekends when I don't work. I come home and I am in pain and I can't think, I can't do anything. I can't help my wife with our chores. I can't walk the dog. I have no enjoyment in my life at the moment and nobody seems to care. There's very little in way of support um, in the area that I'm in because, again, not many people know about it. So there's not many people around to use a support group. There are support groups for people who are in pain, with chronic pain, such as fibromyalgia and pain from injuries, etc. But although those are great for those people, for me, it's not helpful at all. Nobody else understands what it feels like to be 28 and un unable to stand unaided, to be 28 and not be able to shower, just hop in the shower and get on with your day. None of these people that I've ever met at any of these groups that I've been sent to have been, for one, under the age of 50, two, diagnosed with EDS. <sighs> there just seems to be no real support and most of my support I find myself online. Personally, I think we need to do a better job of sending people to, for example, rheumatology. I I wish there was a way that they could have given me a head to toe scan to figure out about everything that was going on. I wish there was a way that we could see specialists quicker. And I understand at the moment as well, we're in the middle of a pandemic, doctors are overworked and they do not have enough time to see their patients. It's not necessarily that they don't care, there will be some that don't, but the ones that do care don't get the time they need to look after their patients how they would like. And on top of that now they are completely exhausted and everyone has to walk on eggshells because nobody wants to catch Covid. So I think more access to specialists and I think possibly even they need to have an EDS team and maybe each area, maybe each country, just so that there is somewhere that you can be referred to so that there are people who understand your condition and understand help that you may need or can signpost you to people who can help you or people who can support you. Because if I said to the doctor, I have MS, they would know what to do. They would know which specialist to send me to. But for other things that are less known, nobody knows. I also think that it would just be nice to have doctors believe you. Um, the support of having a doctor, a medical professional believe you really goes a long way. I struggle with work, I struggle with so much and having a doctor at my back to say actually no, there is good reason for this is much better than trying to argue it out with people on my own. I, um, I have several specialists, gastroenterologists, um, I have a neurosurgeon, I've had, um, I have an orthopedic doctor, I have a rheumatologist, I have um, a cardiologist, and um, I also have a new pain management doctor. And uh, well, I mean, I've had her for like three years, but um, a different one from the one that diagnosed me. And the current pain management doctor that I have, she actually has EDS, and so she gets it. And uh, it's just, she's awesome. And it's really helpful to have that network of doctors that understand and that know what EDS is. And um, my primary doctor, she is awesome. Um, anytime I need a referral, she will write it up for me. And so I just can't tell you how many primary doctors I've had that just dismissed me and um, wouldn't do anything for me. So another helpful thing is finding a support group. I found a support group on Facebook for um, people in Alaska, um, where I currently live, that have EDS. And so it's nice to have that. Um, we meet, we met a lot more before COVID, but um, 
we would meet up and just, you know, have coffee and just talk about life and, um, you know, network with our doctors and things like that. And so that has been super helpful and it's helped me gain even more knowledge um, about EDS and um, all the comorbidities that go along with it. And so, um, again, if you haven't found that doctor, keep searching. You're not crazy. And if you have not found a good network of people, find one in your local area or find one, um, you know, nationwide. There's a plethora of groups out there, um, support groups. So um, just don't give up. Keep fighting. Keep fighting and be your own advocate because if you don't advocate for yourself, no one else probably will. I've learned I had to be a big advocate for myself. Once I was officially diagnosed, was I offered much management advice or support? Not really. I expected that the geneticist would have more of a game plan or more advice for those with EDS. His suggestions were always have ibuprofen on hand, have braces ready, uh, join a support group, and don't go bungee jumping. So I pretty much knew all of those things, and I don't know, I guess I just expected more, especially seeing a geneticist at Vanderbilt. It would have been nice had he had some kind of solid plan put in place, like these are the doctors who are very skilled and knowledgeable about EDS and here, you know, just offered more solutions, but I will say that I took his advice and joined support groups and that has helped a lot because I've gotten so many helpful tips and learned so many things from other zebras. I could honestly say a lot here, but probably one of the biggest things after first receiving the diagnosis would be getting some kind of free counseling. Someone that you can talk to about past medical trauma, about having dislocations, pain all the time, because I know for me, the fear of knowing that at any moment I can have a dislocation or get hurt any other way or get sick a lot easier. And if you get sick or you get hurt, the, the healing time is so slow. So there's a lot of fear living with EDS. Um, so yeah, I wish I wish that some kind of counseling would be offered for free for those with Ehlers-Danlos. In the last year, I have been on a journey meeting with doctors, experts in the field, familiar people of on Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. They're few and far between. I still hit a lot of resistance. And at the same time, I'm getting help now. It's slow, it's a process. I, my insurance will not cover a lot of the different aspects when it comes to the dietitian, when it comes to acupuncture, when it comes to the mindfulness-based stress reduction. It's expensive. Buying new braces that aren't cheap and breaking on Amazon is not affordable for me right now. So much more help is needed. And I want that for everyone. We all know that people with disabilities spend so much more in the span of their lifetimes when they're already disadvantaged and in ableist world, getting access. We all need to do better. So once I'd been diagnosed, I was offered various referrals, although I wouldn't say they didn't come kind of immediately. It was more of a like gradual thing. Once I'd been diagnosed, I wasn't particularly offered anything, I don't think. You know, I was kind of given the diagnosis um, and that was kind of like, you know, you've got EDS, this is what it is off you go. There wasn't really much sort of like advice or support but just over the last few years because of that EDS diagnosis I have been able to access like referrals to other specialists and then sort of support with those different things that I've been referred for. So for example um, I was referred to a specialist cardiologist in London who diagnosed me with POTS um, and then I was able to get treatment sort of medication and stuff for that. 
um, I was referred to a specialist gastroenterologist to look into my digestive problems. So I was diagnosed with gastro gastroparesis and intestinal dysmotility um, and they try and sort of help with the management of those. Um, I see a urologist to help with bladder issues and again we've tried sort of like management type things with that. Um, I was referred to um, the Royal National Orthopaedic Hospital in Stanmore um, where I did their three week rehabilitation like inpatient program. Um, that was I guess the most help I've been offered for the actual like EDS as a whole because that focused on things like physiotherapy, occupational therapy, um, just sort of like general education about EDS and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's mainly been referrals for other things. There isn't a huge amount that I've been offered specifically for the EDS. Um, I learned a bit, I think, through the um, stuff at Stanmore, um, but it's very, very difficult to get any kind of like ongoing support for EDS because it's, with it being a chronic condition, you kind of, you know, I'll get offered like six sessions of physio for a specific issue. Um, and then that's kind of it. There's not really anything like long term for help with like the EDS as a whole. So I'd say the support I've been given has definitely been helpful and it's definitely been what I've needed. Whether it's been enough, I'm not sure. It would be good to have a bit more, specifically I, say, I would say like overall support for the EDS. I mean my GP does an amazing job of trying to support me um, with all sorts of things um, but we just there's no sort of like specialist that just oversees my EDS. I see a rheumat rheumatologist but there's not really an awful lot that they can do um, so yeah it would have been good to have kind of more support sort of overall support rather than just sort of being referred to like this specialist and this specialist it, it all feels quite like separated and um, yeah that's the thing that I struggle with the most is nothing kind of brings it all together. So what would I like to see people with EDS offered after diagnosis? I think I would really like to see people being given some sort of like care coordinator who oversees their whole care and I know that a GP does do that to an extent but I would like to see there being an actual like a person that specialises in EDS who can you know manage everything all of the different referrals bringing stuff together offering just general support for that person with EDS I think that would be amazing to have um, and also I think just more support so perhaps like you know signposting to where you can get peer support um, offering psychological support if that's needed but not I think they have they would have to be very careful with offering psychological support because a lot of people with EDS have had very bad experiences of being sent to psychiatrists and things because that's where what people are saying that their symptoms are um, whereas I think it would be good to be able to access psychological support to deal with the physical issues and for that to be made very clear that it's for dealing with those physical issues not saying that they are down to mental health stuff um, because you know having a chronic lifelong illness is going to affect your mental health and it's important to get the right support for that without them blaming all of your problems on something that's psychological so I think that would be really good. I also think that everybody that's had that's been diagnosed with EDS should have access to genetic testing because you know I've been diagnosed with hypermobile EDS but we haven't ever actually done any genetic tests to rule out the other types of EDS um, and I know that to a certain extent they can do that like based on symptoms but it would just be good to have that confirmation that yes it's definitely hypermobile EDS and not one of the others so I think that would be really good if that could be offered as well. When I've been diagnosed I had the chance to have a very very nice and good doctor. She was a pain doctor actually and um, she gave me prescriptions for uh, conjunctive clothes 
um, she gave me some uh, reference contact to see another another pain doctor which is doing um, acupuncture and uh, I don't know the name um, like when you have a needle in your ear you know and she's really good actually because I went to see her she's really good too and uh, I think that's it she asked me if I was under this or this treatment I'm not because I'm trying to not uh, take any drugs um, I'm, I'm, I'm taking a lot of plants I'm using C CBD etc but uh, I'm trying to avoid all the drugs because I have a lot of allergy because of uh, MCAS and um, yeah, uh, yeah, I think the modern medicine is not for my body. If I'm talking about my shoulder again, um, the pain doctor uh, did, did this thing in my ears, both of them. It was so painful, really. I couldn't sleep for two weeks, actually. But in two days, the pain I had for one year disappeared totally and right now it's, it's pretty weird and right now i can feel i have dysfunction in my shoulder because everything is cracking and and, and i can feel my tendons moving in a weird way but um the pain is gone so yeah i i suppose it was the ghost pain and the fact that she put some um, she put a lot of nails uh, in my in my heels, 14 actually, and uh, it worked. And and I think it's all that matter. The problem is when I had this problem to, with my shoulder, when I have my subluxe uh, problem or my my sacroiliac dysfunction. The problem is that no one wants to hear to to hear the the EDS thing and. Everyone want to focus just on their specialty or their or, or the symptom, just the symptom. And we know that in EDS everything is related, and and you have to to see the big picture to have a proper um, a care treatment, you know. So yeah, I think. The problem is there because when when they don't want to hear that you have EDS or HSD, um, they are very stubborn and, and close-minded and, and and want to see only their their specialty or their the areas where they have the most of knowledge. For me, the main support I would need would be. Uh, to have someone, to have a doctor, a medical person, uh, which is able to connect the dots and which is able to collect all the the review of the specialist I, I saw and be able to do a follow-up actually because I have to do everything by myself. I have to remember everything, I need to read studies and, and connect the dots by myself to understand how it works. I mean, I'm a huge fan of biomechanical and anatomy and uh, I know a bit of physiology, but I'm not a doctor, you know? <laughs> and um, I, w I would like to have someone which is able to explain me how it works and uh, how everything is related because I don't want to just mask the symptoms I want to fix them I want to fix the problem at the source even if it's not possible completely because I know we had a collagen deficient, deficient, deficiency but yeah I would, I would like that uh, over the summer, whenever I was talking to my pediatrician about this at uh, just a wellness checkup, she sent in a referral for me to see a rheumatologist, and I went to the rheumatologist, and the rheumatologist said that I have most of the markers for EDS, um, and that genetics testing would be a good idea. 
um, at that time, we didn't really look into genetic testing because my parents were afraid that insurance wouldn't cover it or if the Affordable Care Act ever got um, appealed, that the insurance, my health insurance would go up, which shouldn't be an issue in America, but it is. Um, so I am waiting on an appointment with a geneticist right now. And we'll see if I have EDS. If I don't, I will be so thankful for that. Um, but I know that living with even a hypermobility syndrome is similar to living with EDS, maybe not as severe. Um, one thing that I think is very important when receiving a diagnosis of EDS or even a hypermobility spectrum disorder is the opportunity to seek out mental health groups or support groups. Um, taking care of your mental health when getting a diagnosis like this is very important. Because when I was finally diagnosed, I was referred to a specialist, a physiatrist, who has a special interest in hypermobility syndromes. She specifically is someone who I'm on a wait list for to see who has a special interest in diseases like mine. I do have other specialists, some who have willfully admitted that they don't know enough about EDS to offer proper recommendations. Some who don't know enough about EDS, however, they decide that it has no contributing factors to health issues. For example, GI specialists who think that EDS has nothing to do with GI issues, IBS, or any other symptoms that would come with GI issues. That makes things really difficult for us. It leaves us without treatment, without answers, and without anything to manage our symptoms. Things definitely need to change. We need shorter wait times to see specialists, we need shorter wait times for diagnosis, and we need physicians to be educated in order to treat us with dignity and in order to treat us faster so that we have a better quality of life. Yes, I was offered a huge treatment by the geneticist. Uh, there was, there is like a schedule of taking special food supplements, uh, the choice of which was based on my uh, amino acids test and also she prescribed some exercises and something else. I didn't do all of this. Um, I choose uh, the options that are really suitable for me. I think the patients should be treated by teams of uh, various medical specialists and this will create a complex approach to treatment. Yes, but not from my country. Um, because here it's very difficult to get the resources that we need when you have a thing like this. For me, it was very helpful to have contact with our community. And because of that, no matter the distance, I have received the advice or the support that I needed to treat myself from here, especially the virtual appointments. So the contact with doctors from another countries and Everything that the EDS Society has offered to us also helped me a lot. It makes me very sad and hopeless in the same way that I don't have that type of support here in my country because I can't improve my health and the issues that I have, such as the genetic test, my CCI, or the Chiari, and others that are very quite serious but if it wasn't for that i wouldn't know the support without borders that i have had to seek from everywhere thanks to the technology so i guess here this is the only thing that is fine maybe it will be treating each problem thinking in a multidisciplinary way to be able and to really improve from the real causes and avoid endless unnecessary visits to doctors and millionaire expenses in things that are not worth it 
or education for them and their environment in addition to to therapy so the trauma caused by being gaslighted and especially if there are the matches because of that so above all an apology an apology for not being taken in account for not being listening it and for not having believed it them when they spoke. La primer médico genetista con la que llegué, quien me hizo el diagnóstico, no me dio ningún tratamiento ni me refirió con algún otro especialista debido a otras comorbilidades que podía presentar. Únicamente me dijo que tenía que aprender a vivir con esto, pero no me dijo cómo. Gracias a que yo estuve investigando, fue que me di cuenta de que tal vez no era la persona adecuada para atenderme y fue así como tuve la oportunidad de buscar más opciones. Soy muy afortunada debido a que tengo acceso a internet y puedo investigar y puedo documentarme acerca de egresarlos. También tengo el privilegio de poder elegir con qué médico atenderme. Si esto no fuera así y si me hubiera quedado con el, la primera opinión que obtuve, hoy seguiría sin tratamiento, no tendría manejo de mis síntomas, probablemente seguiría teniendo varias subluxaciones al día, afectando considerablemente mi calidad de vida y desgastando día con día mi salud en general. Más que un apoyo, pienso que todos los pacientes tienen el derecho y necesitan tener profesionales de la salud que los escuchen y que estén comprometidos con lo que sienten. A veces pienso que no se dan cuenta de que cualquier síntoma, por muy pequeño que sea, puede afectar considerablemente la calidad de vida de una persona. So my geneticist was very great. She gave me a lot of little books with uh, information on EDS uh, regarding different topics. Um, and they were great. The information there is very good and very helpful for me. And I was referred to the Iller Sanders Initiative here in Germany. So it's a club where um, you can get membership and they provide information, seminars, etc. Um, here for patients in Germany and they connect patients with each other and doctors with each other with each other and um, which I think is great and they also have a part for uh, teenagers and young adults that have EDS so that they can connect with each other and um, I just find that initiative really uh, helpful and they told me about orthopedists who specialize in Ehlers-Danlos syndrome in Germany which is great so um, that was the most helpful thing after getting my diagnosis and um, my geneticist said that um, the awareness for Euler Stanless in Germany is pretty low, um, that they have a couple of seminars that one can visit like for doctors to uh, broaden your horizon and broaden your knowledge but um, that in general it's not that great for patients here in Germany. Uh, so she can't refer me to any doctor who specializes, but she can um, see if there is anyone and uh, will give me a call in case she finds a doctor that knows how to help me. The impact that it has that I don't really get the right management advice and the right support, so I still don't really have braces, I don't have mobility aids, I just haven't seen a doctor who specializes in ehlers danlos syndrome and um, I keep just subluxing my joints and I'm in a lot of pain which obviously leads to me struggling with my everyday uh, life but the problem is more that there is a lack of doctors who specialize in ehlers rather than that I'm not referred to a doctor because I'm not taken seriously. Uh, I think that mental support would be great and just 
having a team of doctors who have understanding of that illness um, but mental support because I think especially for young people it's very hard because I can't live the life that all my friends live I have to be more careful and I'm in a lot of pain and no one my age is in this much pain and also hasn't all these struggles that I have so I think mental support would be great and also that the family gets educated on this topic and um, that we do get the braces and the mobility aids in case we need them that we just get what we need that's basically it but I wish that we could access all these things more easily and that people would not just dismiss our symptoms. Even though I have had experiences with doctors that don't believe me, most of them, at least the ones that I have now, do really take that diagnosis into account when they're prescribing treatment or prescribing different options to improve whatever it is that I'm consulting about. Um, I was diagnosed by a geneticist. He's great. He's been very, very kind in this whole process. And he gave me, you know, a, a referral to be able to sort of have like a, a clinical story of what it is that I have and I've been able to take that to my GI doctor to my cardiologist and um, I think that it definitely has helped in that sense where there are doctors that do take it seriously and they do sort of guide their treatment towards that and not just dismiss it as something that isn't happening. As I said, it mostly has helped with referrals and sort of having kind of evidence that that's my diagnosis. In the cases that it hasn't, I have tried to mediate with the doctor or the professional and sort of try to make them see that I'm not making this up, that it's a diagnosis made by a geneticist, by someone who is trained to make these types of diagnoses. And if it just doesn't work out, I will switch doctors. I think once you advance in this, you learn that if you can't sort of talk it out with a doctor and come to a compromise, it's probably better to try to find another one that is willing to listen to you and to listen to the person that gave you the diagnosis in the first place. I think that one of the main supports is to have some kind of physical document that states your diagnosis with, you know, the genetic, the geneticists or the genetic counselor's information and and their signature and everything so that it's more legitimate and I know that this shouldn't be something that has to be done but I do think that it really helps to have doctors believe you. Um, I think that it's important for this geneticist to try to refer you to people who are familiar with the condition because there could be a very good hearted doctor and very smart and very great in their field but if they don't know about the condition it will affect your treatment because they they don't know what to do with it and and it's not that simple to treat someone with this condition as opposed to someone who doesn't have it even if they're the best in their field so I do think that that's very important I also think that emotional support is very important because it's very difficult to live with the daily struggles that can arise from EDS or HSD it's, it's very hard to sometimes do your daily activities, whereas you could have great days where you don't have barely any symptoms. You could also have horrible days where you can't even get out of bed. So I do think that it's important to offer some kind of emotional support, whether it be through friends, family, or through counseling with, with a therapist. I personally rely mostly on my friends and my family, and I think that that has helped me, but it really does depend on the case. When I was first diagnosed, I was offered referrals to specialists, but no one that specialized in Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. All of these specialists had little to no experience with this syndrome. So I am paying out of pocket for my treatment. I'm seeing a specialist who knows about Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome uh, who knows about hypermobility in general and can give me exercises that aren't going to injure me. So, because Kaiser does not do anything for Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and will not pay for my treatment, I am paying out of pocket to see a specialist. This has put a big stress on my family. 
I am just a broke college student. I cannot afford this. My parents are teachers. They cannot afford this. I cannot keep seeing this doctor paying him out of pocket, but it's my only option right now because Kaiser is not helpful. My GP is not very helpful. She, she's more helpful than the last one I had, but man, it's stressful. When someone is diagnosed with EDS, I think that they should be given someone to manage their case who knows about EDS. Someone who knows a little bit about each specialty and can connect the dots a little bit. Who knows that EDS is connected to gastroparesis and POTS. Who understands the mental, the mental health impact that it has on the patient. So I think that someone should be given a case manager to manage all of their different specialties and help them find a good plan for them, because everyone is different. But once, uh, once I was with my geneticist, who was a specialist in EDS and HSD um, spectrum, he gave me lots of information, especially more holistic, you know, exercises, isometric work I could do with my body, things to avoid foods that might be helpful in reducing inflammation, um, physical therapy, stabilizing activities for craniocervical issues, knees, hips. So that man is, was really a lifesaver, him and his team. Um, because I, I didn't so much want to go the path of just meds, and there really is no med for EDS, but there's things that can help with some of the symptoms. But I would like to see a lot more support for people like us. Uh, just an understanding of more rare disorders as a whole, I think would be helpful because really um, they're not as rare as we all think. I mean, someone out there has them and I've met people that have it. So I know we're out there and Yes, we might be few, but we are mighty, and I think having the broader society of medical professionals at least know what the words Ehlers-Danlos means um, would mean a lot, because then at least we have a, a window into help. Treatment afterwards, mainly physiotherapy, um, either for my feet or um, just for my joints in general and stretching. And I got given stretching exercises. I feel like they did help, um, but I feel like it's a limited thing. Not everyone can just have physiotherapy. See That's more it. people get a varied range of support after diagnosis, not just uh, physiotherapy. Um, I feel like uh, chronic pain, such as hypermobility, e EDS, is different, and it's a case by case basis, and we should all be treated for the support that each person needs rather than just blanket statements. So I really hope you have found hearing all of these different people's stories helpful and that it's given you something to think about or something to relate to if you have EDS as well. Thank you again to all of the people that took part. I really, really appreciate your contributions and I'm sure that they will really help to raise awareness during EDS Awareness Month and beyond. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have and you'd like to see more from me, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel. Also hit the notification bell. That means you'll get notified every time I upload a video so you don't miss anything. Leave me a comment. Let me know if you can relate to anything that's been said, what kind of support you've been offered if you've got EDS or what kind of support you think should be offered to people with EDS. It would be really interesting to hear your views and opinions on that. Also let me know if there's any particular videos you'd like to see me do, whether it's related to EDS or something different. It would be great to hear what sort of stuff you'd like to see. Also come and follow me on social media. My links are in the description below but I will pop my Instagram and Twitter up here. Those are the two platforms that I'm mainly on. So so do come over and say hello to me. It would be great to talk to you and I'm replying to comments as quickly as I can. And I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye.